Dark Souls 3, originally released in spring of 2016. Available on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC platforms. Retailing at $59.99 for the regular edition, and $84.99 for the deluxe edition that includes the DLC. Dark Souls 3 is squarely in the middle of the pack, placing above Dark Souls 2 and Demon's Souls, and my placing this in the middle of the pack it might be controversial, as many consider Dark Souls 3 to be the best of the Souls games. And mechanically speaking, it is definitely the most refined experience, giving us omnidirectional rolling, and generally speaking, much speedier combat than we've seen previously. Possibly the influence of another game we've not talked about, Bloodborne. But don't worry, we'll talk about Bloodborne before too long. But that is a topic for another day. But not all elements of this game are as refined as its combat mechanics. One issue I take with Dark Souls 3 is that it is not a very original title, with virtually every element of the story being a reference to an earlier game. NPCs as well are usually technically original, but so similar to previous NPCs that it's hard to tell the difference. This ends up making this feel sort of like a Souls Best Of compilation. You find yourself going, hey, Remember that guy? Well, he's here again. Well, basically here again anyway. But while the story element and NPC recycling is a bit disappointing, where this game doesn't disappoint is in the design of its various areas. Every area has a profound sense of age to it, but not all in quite the same way. Some areas look as if the same battle has been fought there for hundreds of years while other areas simply look abandoned and dilapidated. Towards the end of the game, you start getting areas that look as if they are old but well-preserved. But all areas share a hopeless despair. But it's not simply the superficial that make these areas impressive. They are well-designed in terms of gameplay. Like how every area will have shortcuts, but getting to these shortcuts will prove to be a challenge. One that can be met with either skill, or doing a large amount of grinding. As this game very much gives you the two options of any real Souls game. Get good, or get grinding. But if we're being totally honest, you'll probably do a little bit of both before you reach the end. Speaking of getting to the end, what you're trying to do here is kill a bunch of people that have had their own adventures, but chose not to link the fire. Because when they got to the end of their adventure and saw their choices were walk away or light myself on fire, silly them, they chose not to light themselves on fire. And apparently this act of self-preservation is a huge issue for a lot of people in this world. This also leads to one of the more interesting changes. Unlike Dark Souls 1 and 2, you're not playing a character that's hollowing. Instead, you're playing as a character that's unkindled, which means this character already tried to go on an adventure to possibly link the flame, but they failed before they got to the end. So the best possible idea to deal with heroes that did get to the end is to round up a bunch of people that couldn't hack it the first time. In terms of actual effects on gameplay this change has, you never look like a zombie, at least not without doing very specific side quests. And instead of unhollowing, you use an ember to kind of be a little on fire. All it does is give you more hit points. I think the idea is you use an ember if you're in a situation that you just can't quite get through. So the extra hit points will hopefully make the difference so you can reach the shortcut or beat the boss or what have you. In my playthroughs of this game, since it first released, I have almost always completely forgotten about using embers at any point. I think it's the lack of the visual reminder that going hollow gives you that's made me just sort of forget about this mechanic. There are a total of four endings to see here, and even a few variations on those four endings. But in true Souls fashion, none of these endings are actually gonna 
answer any questions you might have. But if you're playing a Souls game and really expect to have questions answered, you're doing it wrong. So is Dark Souls 3 worth your money? Well, it is absolutely worth playing, however, it's very hard to justify a $60 or even $85 price tag, depending on which version you get. But the good news is that Dark Souls 3 goes on sale fairly frequently on various online shops. So, I would recommend waiting for the next big sale, be it a summer sale or a winter sale or some other sale, and then pick it up on the cheap. Personally, I was able to get Dark Souls 3 Deluxe Edition for only $20, which given its regular $85 price tag is a great deal. And I would recommend that everyone try and do the same. Please do subscribe, comment, like, and tell your friends.